platform now are in-house councils. Some of us want to transition also to in-house. Some are there already. And um, they are battling with how they will become visible and how they will create that influence. I mean, do you have um, anything to add to? I know that you had mentioned some few strategies at the beginning when we spoke. But then, what 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 do you what do you have to tell the in-house lawyer so that that in-house lawyer will be visible and um, will ensure that they begin to build their influence and to get to the top and probably with that to become a board member. Yeah, I think the first thing is your mindset. Um, and you really, really need to take care of that. Um, as lawyers, we go through a lot. We go through really, you know, rigorous training. Um, when we qualify, of course, we feel very confident and very proud that we're lawyers. But when you go in to work in the business, you have to think like a business. Most in most cases, the legal function is not core to the business. In most businesses, the legal function is a support function. It's up to us as lawyers um, to make sure that we change that narrative, that we are kind of sort of understanding, you know, the dynamics of the business um, to be able to change the narrative from being a support function to actually an essential part of the business that can enable the business to succeed. You become an enabler, you become a partner. So one of the first things you do when you're in-house, you don't need to justify that you're competent because you need to remember you got the job in the first place. So don't spend your time, don't spend valuable time trying to prove that you're competent. Do that in terms of your actions, your behavior, how you engage with the stakeholders. Stakeholders engagement, very important. Stakeholder management, you know, very important. What I used to say is when I'm, you know, starting at a new organization, I cannot sort of mentally map out my first 100 days, you know, which is, Generally, most businesses kind of sort of all similar. You either have a, you have a product or you have a service. You have to sell that to a customer base because otherwise, what is the point of a business? You have something that somebody wants. So you need to know your products, your services. You need to know, you know, how those products are designed and how you get from the de design of the product and services, thinking about all the regulatory framework that needs to be in place to actually get it to market. And this is regardless, you know, whether you are a big bank, a small bank, um, whether you're a tech company, it doesn't matter what business that you are in. There are, you know, basic, you know, fundamental principles, which is your products, your services, getting to market, knowing your customer, retaining your customer, how do you grow, how do you make money? There will be different parts of the business that have responsibility for those function. The CEO, for example, has the overall responsibility, but the CEO cannot just do the job on his own. He would have a you know, chief operating officer. He would have a commercial officer. He would have a product officer. You will have a human resources officer. You need to know who these people are and you need to start building relationships with them. It's very important that lawyers remember that we are in the business of relationship building not so much in the business of you know legal technical techni technicalities you need to get people to listen to you and remember when you're starting at a new business you haven't got any pedigree you haven't got anything that people can say yeah we think we recruited the right person but you need to be able to demonstrate that you know that actually yes i am the right person so you need to go about understanding how the business operates. So for me, I usually seek out the chief financial officer uh, because once you make friends with them, you, you know exactly what is going on in the business. 
you know what the pressures of the business are and even before i join a business i'm always looking at if they're a public company i want to look at the you know their you know financial statements i want to look at their you know um annual returns i want to look at any public documentation that i have to get a sense of what is important to that business and also a business does not stand alone there will be competition there are competitors you need to have market intelligence you may think that what has this got to do with the practice of law when you're in-house it's got everything you know to do with it and also more importantly when you're going through all this process you are acquiring knowledge knowledge gives you confidence and when you're confident you're resilient when you're resilient you face up to different challenges and that's how you survive um it's not a question of sitting in a boardroom or being part of the senior management or actually being in business and just say well trust me i'm a lawyer i know what i'm doing you have to actually demonstrate that you know what you're doing and you're not spending all your time telling the business what the law says you know you have to speak the simple business language it's like respect you cannot demand it you have to earn it and like i said your career tra trajectory is more like a marathon not a sprint it's small steps get into the business get to know about the business get to know about the business dynamics get to know about the customers, get to know about the products, and always ask the question, how can I help? For me, I see, I use my skills, competency, experience to find solutions for the business. Business are interested in somebody who is pragmatic, who is solution oriented, and who enables the business to have that competitive edge against the competition. Those are just the fundamentals. And you find that the more you know, the more confident you know you are. It's very important, you know, to sort of master the art of listening. You know, um, th th there's a saying that um, you've got two ears and you've got one mouth. There's a reason for that. I listen more, talk less. And I think one thing that you need to master as well is the ability to look at data, to look at information and make your own personal judgment.